there is a, there is a related yet unrelated point that came up when you you use something where you use the word revenge uh, to I think a couple of sentences back you use the word revenge you said but revenge is too, revenge is too strong a term here you use forgiveness as a term and then something you disqualified it saying uh, I why I want to bring this up is that there are levels. Uh, yes. at, at every level, you have an ability to reduce the negatives. And uh, at every level, there is also a chance to improve upon the positives or be balanced about both the elements. It's not that you don't get angry or you are always forgiving. Obviously, there will be times where you will not be. The idea what I'm getting from your personality as, as we go along uh, talking about your stuff, uh, I'm finding there is a sense of... Um, there is a healthy sense of no self <laughs> in the sense of okay for a while I will I will let go of this let me see what happens so that egocentric thing of saying I need to have things my way which obviously you feel it's not that uh, you did mention the first two minutes is panic yeah the, th the first two minutes is fear the first two minutes is anger whatever those yeah. kind of things that overtake us which are our habits but then you then you balance them out and you start thinking okay uh, how does this pan out if if i let uh, if i rent out my emotion yeah. or if i if i let go of this emotion so i like that feeling of uh, balancing it out that you're taking uh, one uh, question that has been there in my mind for a while uh, that we've been talking uh, you have not given us an example of uh, how you deal with things after you've been successful. Say, for example, you said that as a yoga teacher, you felt like, mm. oh, will I be able to do it or not and all this stuff. Mm. Now, after that has happened and you have stood up to uh, whatever that you are trying to do, be an intern mm. in something or going and teaching mm. yoga or mindfulness, right. or whatever that you are doing. Now, well, the inadequate Zen hasn't gone away anywhere. Mm -hmm. She is walking with you while you are going and right. trying to be a teacher. So she stands with you as you stand and then you are... Uh, I want to give a small episode. My um, my advertising teacher and guru uh, had taught me about body language and uh, mm. he used to... Uh, wonderful teacher in every sense. I owe everything that I know in my field to him, obviously. Uh, he had mentioned his first teaching class. Uh, so he said his height wasn't too much. So uh, he went a few minutes before the class started and he went and sat on the bench. So whoever came, they had to kind of look up to him. Look up. Whatever their height. And he said that's how it kind of worked. And then we had gone for a meeting. We were trying to do some work together. And that guy was a creative fellow, some film producer or something. And he had four different kinds of chairs in his room and all of different sizes. So in a way, when we got seated, the lowest chair was being given to my uh, guru at that point of time. So I told him, no, no, come, <laughs> you sit here. I'll sit on that one. Because I knew that uh, it kind of worked to his advantage when he wanted right. to. So he said, yeah, yeah, I would have been uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Now, I have always felt a little contrarian to these kind of, although I understand body language and stuff like that because of my field, I used to think that if I have it in me, it doesn't matter where I sit. I can sit on the floor and really get you down there. Uh, over a period, I have been wrong and right both. I think he was also right. Uh, it makes it easier. If you already have an upper hand, it really makes it easier. But somehow, I, I think I was too much of a showman in my head. Okay, I can do whatever I want from wherever I want and I'll do it well. And I've had reasonable success. It works with my personality. I'm happy. So uh, from that context, uh, that has been my way of handling things. Mm -hmm. I would want to ask you, once you uh, got these uh, ABCD degrees, since you have so many of them, so can you share a story where you actually went and you felt this pang of, oh, I'm not good enough. What did you do? What what happened on the ground? And how did you deal with it? What did you tell yourself? Did you fall? Did you get up? Any story which is interesting? Okay. 
uh yoga only i tell you um mm-hmm. i went to teach my class and it was a one on one class okay and uh, i i recently got done with this uh, degree like and then the pandemic happened so i i was very lost in the middle i didn't have a lot of people to coach and things like that so i one of one advice that my teacher gave me is you start teaching friends family whoever so i had a friend and she was she was a new friend whoever and i was only seeing her so i went to teach her and i said she asked me would you teach me i said okay so i went and i had uh, a lot of things planned in my head okay this is the sequence that will happen and this is what i want to take my class in and the minute i stood and i started teaching there's some things that i didn't take into consideration is um her probably not understand she's completely new to this field right so because i have certain set of uh, knowledge about it certain things i'm like yeah okay this is understood but may not be and that so she started you know pointing out oh i don't get this and it was my first class so i was very i was already nervous and uh, so i sat down uh, in the middle of teaching her and it was easier because she was only one person so i sat down and i told her uh, you know i'm teaching trying to you know and at the end of every yoga class you have like a guided meditation and things like that i was like you know i'm trying to teach you how to calm your mind down and right now i'm not calm oh. and so i sat down and i told her i'm going to show you a very real example of how breathing technique works and i did one of uh, the breathing techniques that's known to you know calm you down so i actually did that and then i got up and you know i said you know it's my first class and i'm really glad you gave me this opportunity to teach you and right here i've shown you you know one thing cuz i've always whenever i've seen other yoga teachers you know and they'll be talking like towards the end of this class where the meditations happening they will say these absolutely lovely things and you will feel like they have it all under control and all the life philosophies you know they have and i said see this is exactly what i'm trying to tell you and then after the class ended she came and told me you know i actually felt like i could relate to you a lot more and then what you started saying started resonating with me more so that's how i dealt with it i i literally stopped i sat down and i said now see i did the breathing the i did one of the pranayams myself and i calmed myself down so that is how so i did it with that i am going to break it down um uh, uh, one is again uh, you've been talking about it sometimes it may seem that people the guests on the podcast are all accomplished uh, masters of some kind and they have answers for every question that comes up even if they are impromptu it might be seen as gift of gab or something like that but i'm glad that you brought this up uh, i want to break this down into this episode itself the story first is your honesty you told her look i am not okay i think which is what you mentioned earlier and which is what we've been speaking that it freed you of the burden of trying to be perfect yeah you sat down second is your constant practice you are knowing which pranayam works right yeah. if you're going to teach someone you better know which one works yeah so the skill set the discipline that you've done it often enough so that it calms you down i have done enough meditation and um, bit of yoga sometime in my life to realize that practice is everything Oh, yeah. everything everything else is gyan you can see 10000 videos and be nowhere you can do one class and learn a lot more everything yeah so so your practice was good enough possibly that's why you could sit and you could calm yourself down and in fact uh, demonstrate both the negative and the positive uh, yeah. the third thing i would want to uh, want to bring up on especially because this is the values workshop and the bit of pre mumble i gave you about sharing vulnerabilities this is exactly what i love to hear on the on the podcast because it gives me a lot of strength i i do not know my guest uh, and even if i know them uh, as friends the topics that we choose and what we are talking of uh, very often it happens that uh, at the end of every podcast they say i am going to talk to you every day is just to prove we never talk again about those topics because obviously it happened because of the podcast the scenario happened but in my head these are coffee shop conversations where you bear yourself otherwise you don't bother it does not matter if you come across looking good or bad it doesn't matter to me it doesn't make matter to me also that how i come across as uh, whether it's video quality audio quality all those things are unimportant what is important is what is zen bringing to this uh, conversation so that honesty is what you spoke of the discipline that you 
brought into the story that you talked about and the result uh, trust me there are times uh, that i feel whether people are getting uh, the objective of the podcast because there are people out there who do a much flam like i can speak to your dad who's an actor and um, he can do 10000 times better than me in terms of flamboyance i'm sure but but internally i'm clear that the intent that i have is so strong that it covers up for everything else which is something that i want to bring up surely not because it brings my example but all the things that you said in terms of the story that you narrated uh, the forgiving part that you narrated uh, your advice taken and not taken your own understanding what you're talking journaling and free flow is also you could write random shit and never look at it back again just feel light and do nothing about it yeah i have done it i didn't know it was free flow that i was doing today when you spoke i said oh i used to type a lot on my this but it was because i am a writer i i felt it was venting out that i want to write something which is gibberish so i always think it wasn't venting out the world in my head but today i thought maybe it was some kind of free flow i do not know but i never went back to it sometimes or if i went back to it as a writer i said kya likhta hai must so it was idiotic in that sense but well what i want to bring up is that you went back and you still analyzed it okay there is a chance that i may have stumbled upon gold here and not realized yeah. and which again comes back to self analysis and honesty to relook at yourself and maybe i was wrong so i have done this in fact after 10 10 12 12 years i have actually called up people and said you know what uh, i remember something like this had happened and i had told you something like this and i was wrong here Um, sometimes one doesn't get the chance. I have had friends who passed away, so then you are thinking, how do you tell them? Then you say, kind of say, wherever you are, just know this that uh, uh, this was wrong mm-hmm. on my part, and wherever you are, I share my uh, sense of forgiveness. Uh, if you did something to me, or if I feel that I was guilty of something, please forgive me. I think I was wrong there. I did not realize, but now since I know, I am just letting go of this whole episode. So I find it is. the truth of this whole statement actually it does not matter body is a body is people can be here or not here it doesn't matter the, at least it frees me i have for uh, you mentioned it in the beginning of the episode that i am done with it yeah because life is not going to stop tomorrow is another day tomorrow we'll make fresh mistakes we'll have fresh problems we will have fresh guilt and um, to yeah stay to true to the topics have new adic- inadequacies you feel we are not up to this or up to that but the i think the the entire conversation uh, seems like a pattern you you be honest what's the issue you try and face it uh, mention it to yourself first try and resolve it then and there while it is small if it is a as a so this leads me to one last question which is a big one mm-hmm. in that sense what if it has gone so far ahead that it's a big inadequacy but right now you can't do say uh, no disrespect mentioned to uh, uh, meant for uh, himesh reshmaiya i he used to sing in a particular manner okay. uh, and was laughed at but he stuck stuck to his core competency right now i think he comes on some show indian idol or something i don't know some show he comes and he is judging and i find him as good or as bad as anybody else in the industry there's no specific mm-hmm. this because i'm not listening to him sing in that particular manner right and he has a healthy sense of um, respect for himself and i was thinking and and he is he is like any other good judge or whatever mm-hmm. they are flamboyant but he will say yeah i like your stuff i am going to give you a chance or something like that right. and suddenly i felt i used to look at him in a in a funny manner earlier right. but he seems to be like a normal guy there is nothing special or bad about him he's quite all right and it's not obviously he will say who cares what do you think about me but i am talking about me here yeah so my question to you is uh, 
why i brought himesh reshma as an example is ki suppose you are far to gone ahead and you may made a success of something that you think is not good for yourself suppose that was his trademark style of singing only and mm. he was successful for that now he knows it is lousy but i can't do much as creatives i have no lot of people who work like that now in that scenario how would you handle that inadequacy hmm suppose uh, yeah matlab it is wrong but it it works for you what can you do about it at that <laughs> well if it works for you I, i think you have to decide how comfortable you are with projecting yourself in this way or not there are times where i think people know that okay this is not working uh, i mean i have i've realized that okay this is not uh, me authentically me but it's working for me so then they just go with it or there are sometimes people who then uh, diversify and then make fun of themselves or like take it as a joke which obviously takes uh, bravery to another level i would imagine but um, Yeah, I think it it depends on how you take that scenario for yourself. How how deeply it affects you, if you if you at all reach that realization. Okay, I I love the answer that you gave because you brought a new depth to the whole process that I did not uh, foresee when I asked you the question. That effectively means if you become really comfortable with who you are, it doesn't matter what your inadequacy is. Yeah, you can actually have a healthy laugh at yourself. Yeah, and there are people uh, I've seen, uh, obviously much older than me, who do that, and I find that amazing. When I, when you know, to look at them, it's like you, I have a newfound respect for this person because they suddenly, you know, they're not telling you that everything's been great and I've always been perfect and you should follow me and be like me. They're telling you like, yeah, okay, I messed up, but now I can't go back and change it. So, and that is really nice to see. Beautiful. It's very inspiring. Yeah, because this has now raised the topic to a wonderful new high. Uh, almost at the very end of the episode because we started with how lousy we feel when we feel inadequate and all the other little values that we spoke of but in the end acceptance might be just the one word that you know uh, raises it to a very high level right so thank you and uh, it's been a wonderful chat uh, zen i have enjoyed it uh, very much completely different from uh, the normal chat that i generally land up having we did talk a lot of psychology i now realize but it was enjoyable and hopefully uh, it came across for what it stands for words being right. words obviously they are poor uh, comfort when you're trying to say something of consequence but we can just hope oh, so thank you so much thank you so much it was lovely yes thank you bye bye bye